math demystified. Hello everyone, you are welcome to my tutorial class. This is the part A of indices. Indices is the plural of index. Index is the same thing as power or exponential. What is the meaning of index? Index tells how many times a number is being multiplied by itself. For example, if I say 8 to index 2, it simply tells us that 8 is multiplying itself twice. And that is why we have 8 times 8 and the result will be 64. Now let's go to loss of indices. I'm going to do some variations to the loss of indices that you are used to, bring in some spices and make it interesting to us. So, number one law. X to index zero equals one. This X you see in all the laws I'll be writing must not be equal to zero, but X can be any other number. So I want you to begin to think of numbers as not being only positive old numbers. So if I say X is a number, your X could be 1, could be 10, could be 20, could be minus 7, could be a fraction as 2 over 5, could be minus 7 over 8, could be a root, could be a power, could be anything. So that means that if I write minus 8 raised to power 0, my answer is supposed to be 1. If I write 3 over 7 and I raise the power 0, my answer is supposed to be 1. If I write square root of 3 and I raise the power 0, my answer is supposed to be 1. Any kind of number you could ever think of. Even if I write 5 raised to the power 2 and I raise the power 0, my answer is supposed to be 1. That is what the law is saying. That any number you raise to power 0 will give you one now before we move further there are some things i also want us to note that when you have one and you raise one to any number you raise one to any power the answer will be one if you raise one to minus eight the answer is one if you raise one to eight the answer is one we just learned if you raise 1 to 0, the answer is 1. If I say 1 and I raise it to a fraction, 2 over 3, the answer is 1. If I write 1 and I raise it to a root, the answer is 1. Whatever you raise 1 to, it will remain 1. I want you to note that at the beginning of the lesson. I also want us to note that anytime you have any number, the number is the same thing as the number itself raised to power 1. Please take note of this. If I have 5 at any point in time, it simply means 5 raised to power 1. Let's go to law number 2. Law number 2 says A raised to power B everything to power c is equal to a i multiply the powers b c that simply means if i have 2 raised to power 3 raised to power 2 the answer will be 2 these powers will multiply themselves and that will give me 6. now if i have a i raise it to power b and I multiply this whole number you have right now, if I multiply it by another number C, and I raise that C to another power D, and I put everything in bracket, and I raise it to a power E, what will it be? So this E will multiply this B, and this E will multiply the D, so that my result will become A raised to power B E, then C raised to power D E. So, I also want us to note this very important information. 
if I have a negative number where a is a number, if I have a negative number and everything is raised to even power, this negative raised to even will become positive, then I have my a raised to the even number like we just learned. So negative raised to even number will make it become positive. If I have negative number raised to odd number, the result will still be negative of the number raised to odd, raised to the power. If I have a positive number raised to even number, it will not change. It will still be positive number raised to even number. Then if I have positive number raised to odd number, it will be positive number raised to odd. If you look at this properly, you will see that it's only when you have a negative number raised to odd number that you have negative. Aside that, you have positive. Negative raised to even positive, positive raised to even, positive, raised to odd, positive, but negative raised to odd is negative. Please take note of this, it's very important. I also want to bring your attention to the fact that whenever you have a negative number like this, and the sign is inside, see the bracket, see the sign inside, whatever power you have here, we have effect on this sign. But if the sign is not in the bracket, say you have something like this, this power has no effect on this sign. In this case, this power has effect on this sign. But in this case, this power has no effect on this sign. I'll give an example. For example, if I have minus 2, everything like that, raised to 3. And I also have minus 2, raised to 3. This one, negative, raised to odd. Don't forget, we said if I have a negative number raised to odd, the result will be what? Negative. This is negative. Then 2 raised to power 3 is 8. Now let's look at this. This one, this is not having effect on it, so I'm just writing the negative. Then it happens that this one, 2 is 8, and the results are same in this case. But let's look at this. If I have minus 2 and raised to power 4 and I also have minus 2 and I put my 4. You will see that this negative and this power here is an even number. If I raise a negative to an even number, it will become positive. And 2 raised to power 4 is 16. And this one, negative here and this 4, they have nothing in common. So because this 4 is not affecting the negative, so the negative will be there. Then 2 raised to 4, it will be what? 16. Can you see that? Good. So please take notes. When you have a bracket, and you have either plus or minus in the bracket, the power will have effect on the sign. But when there is no bracket, and you have a negative, the power will not have any effect on the sign. Please take notes. Law number three. Let's take another one that looks like the one we just did. If I have a raised to power n over b raised to power m and everything is raised to power y. See what you have. You can actually separate this 
into a n raised to power y over b n raised to power y. You can do that. So that your answer will become a raised to power n y over b raised to power m y. You can do that. And that is what it is. Law number four, we have x raised to power minus n. You are told that it's the same thing as 1 over x raised to power n. And that's correct. But let's break this down. Let's break it down so that you can know how they got that. x raised to power minus n you know, when I was teaching algebra, I explained that when you have x like this, it's the same thing as writing x over 1. So I can rewrite this x as x over 1. So if I do, then this will be minus n. Now I know that many teachers will tell you that this minus has become 1 over then you now write x raised to power n. I was told the same thing, but I didn't have the lever to ask my teacher why, because that sounded like magic. Now, this minus means reciprocal, and reciprocal means turn something upside down. So, you turn something upside down, and that is why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. This is x. I want to turn x upside down. If I have to turn x upside down, there has to be something on that. So this x can be written as x over 1. So this same x you have is same thing as x over 1, if you can remember. And this minus n, minus n, so everything is still intact. So for me to be able to remove this minus, then I have to bring in the effect of the reciprocal, which means turn something upside down. So if I turn this upside down, I will have 1 over x and the negative is gone because I've already performed the operation. This operation means turn what you have here upside down. Since I performed the operation, the negative will be out. Now, looking at what we have here, what we have here looks exactly like the law we just did. And the law says that when I have something like this and I'm raising it to a power, don't forget I told you that when you have any number and there is no power in it, the power is 1. So this one has 1 here. This one too has 1 here. So if I now want to operate it, this will be 1 raised to power n. Why this other one too will be x, 1 times n raised to power n. I hope we are all following. Then we have also learned today that when you have 1 raised to anything, it remains 1. This is 1. And this is x raised to power n. And that is why this is equal to this. So there is no magic that will make this negative become 1 over. This is exactly what has happened. But when you want to use it, you could just move from here and write your expression as this and keep working. Now, let's take an example then we explain what I'm talking about. If I have A over B and everything is raised to power minus N, if you are not familiar with what I just did now, you write 1 over the whole of this and you start working, you will get the same answer which is correct and the method 2 is very correct. But let's use the method I just used here. Now, I have a fraction already. This is negative. I want to remove the negative. The negative is telling me I should turn this thing upside down. So if I turn it upside down, I will have B over A and everything raised to power N. And that is my answer. But I don't want to leave my answer like that. So I want to write it as B raised to power N over A raised to power N. That is very fast. Some other people may decide to write it like this and say 1 over A over B, the way it is, and I'll put the N here. 
this is a fraction make this one a fraction so that you have one over one make this one multiplication you turn this one upside down b over a is to power n then when you work it you now have this times this b raised to power n over a raised to power n you see we got exactly the same thing but this is faster just know that whenever you have negative with the power you are turning whatever you have in the bracket upside down so turn it upside down the negative is gone open your bracket and you are done now when you don't have a fraction you know that this x can also be written as x over 1 so that when you turn it upside down you have your 1 over x raised to the power n law number 5 x is to the power n times x raised to the power m is equal to x n plus m I know we all know that as long as the bases are the same for example 2 raised to the power 3 times 2 raised to the power say minus 2 pick the base then you add this up and this case to be 3 plus this number is a negative number so that when you solve it you have 2 3 this times this is minus 2 and the answer in this case is what 2 raised to the power 1 which you know is equal to 2. Law number 6. x raised to the power n over x raised to the power m, which some people may like to write as x raised to the power n divided by x raised to the power m. They mean the same thing. So this one, the law says it will be x, then n minus m. Let's take an example straight away. We have 2 raised to power 3 over 2 raised to power say minus 2. And the answer will be written as what? 2, 3 minus in the formula. Then this one has a negative power. And that will give me 2, 3 minus times minus plus 2. And that is 2 raised to power 5. And if you punch your calculator, you should get 32. Law number 7. It says that when you have a particular root, like we have right here, and everything is raised to power something, in this case, power n, this can also be written as where the one outside can be inside. Don't forget this is 1. No, I told you it's 1. So it can also be written like that. And um, this is now expressed as x when I want to remove the root. Then the power you have here will come first, which is n over. Then the roots will come over here. That simply means that if I'm given m here and x without giving me any, any other number in the power, this can also be written. Don't worry, I've told you that when you have a number without a power, it should be 1. So you can rewrite that and it will be x raised to the power 1 so that when you want to remove the root, it becomes x. What we had here in the power here was what we put as the numerator of the power. So the same thing is going to happen here. And this will be 1 over, what do I have here? M. So if you do not know that when you don't have any power, the power is 1, you may not know what to do here. So when there is no power, know that the power is 1. So anytime you are working and there is no power, just know that the power is 1. And that tells us that when we have something like this, maybe you have a cube root of 8, and you're looking for it. I know you know the answer is 2. But let's check it. This can be written as 8. Then this is 1. That will be 1 over what we have here. 3. Now, the 3 you have here is telling you there is a number you can raise to this 3 to get this. And that is 2 raised to power 3. And if you multiply you will have this 
So this three can cancel this three and my answer is what? 2 raised to power 1 which is eventually 2. Let me show you something very fast. If I have 4 root here and there is 16 here and I want to solve this. Uh, well, let me do the same thing. This is 16. The power here is 1. So that will be 1 over. This is 4. And this is giving me what? 2 raised to power 4 because this 4 is telling me there's a number I can raise to power 4 to get 16 and that's 2 raised to power 4 and half times 1 over 4. Please pay attention to this aspect. Many people always make mistake here. Now, many people want to quickly cut and now say the answer is 2 raised to power 1 and the answer is 2 and that is wrong. Do you know why? These are even numbers. So if I'm cutting the even number, I am adding plus minus. I'm adding plus minus. So this is plus minus and this is plus minus. These are odd numbers. So there's no plus minus. Somebody may ask why. Now listen, let me give you an example. If I have square root of 4, I just ask you what is the answer? If you say the answer is 2, you are wrong. The answer is supposed to be plus or minus 2. Why? Because the result you get here is telling you that when you multiply the number by itself, you should get what you have inside. The result you get for your root is telling you that when you multiply the number by itself, you know, in this case, it's a square root. So multiply the number by itself, you know, that will be 2 times 2. If I have cube root, that will be 2 times 2 times 2. If I have fourth root, that will be 2 in 4 places. So in this case, it's telling me that I have a number I can multiply by itself just 2 times and I will get 4. And you know that if I say plus 2 times plus 2, I will get 4. I will get plus 4, which is what I have here, 4. And if I say minus 2 times minus 2, I will still get plus 4. So it's not only the positive that will give me the result here, the negative too will give me the result. So the answer is plus minus. Same thing is applic applicable here too. If I say 2 in 4 places, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and they are all positive numbers, I will get plus 16. If I also have two minus 2 times minus 2, that's already 4, times minus 2, that's minus 8, times minus 2, that's plus 16. So it's the plus and the negative that will give me the 16. But when I want to do this now, look at this one. I have 8. So it's only plus 2 times plus 2 times plus 2 that will give me 8. If I try using the negative, it will be wrong. Because if I say minus 2 times minus 2, it's already plus 4. Times minus 2 will not give me minus 8. So the negative cannot work. So when the powers are odd and you are cutting them, you will not have plus minus. But when the powers are even, once they are even and you are cutting, definitely there will be plus minus. Please take note. Let's go to number 8. Law number 8 says x raised to power n equals x raised to power m. When you have things like this, it simply implies that n is equal to m. The common mistake students make is that they cancel this x. You don't cancel this x. You know why? Because these are powers. So you cannot just cancel the numbers. This is not the same thing as when you have x times n equals x times m. In this case, you can divide both sides by x by x so that your n will be equal to m. But in this law, the law says that x to a power of n is equal to x to a power of m. You don't cancel this. So you just simply say it implies that what n is equal to m. Let me even explain that so that you don't think it's magic. If I pick 2 and I say 2 raised to a particular number, is equal to the same 2 raised to 5. And I say find x. This equality sign here is telling you that everything I have here is equal to everything I have here. Now the base here is 2. The base here 2 is 2. That means these are the same. Don't forget the 
equality sign is saying the quantity here is equal to the quantity here. So here the base is 2, here the base is 2. Here the power is 5. If the quantities are the same, what do you think this will be? 5. So x is equal to 5. As simple as that. Do not cancel. Law number 9. I want you to guess what the answer will be. Following the example I just gave you, it simply implies that n is equal to m. Let's use a similar example like the one we just used. The powers are the same, so these bases are different. So let me pick something like 3. I'll pick this one as if I don't know it. And call this 5. And call this 5. The powers are the same, so the powers here are the same. So this equality sign is saying that this quantity on the left-hand side is the same thing as the quantity on the right-hand side. If it is so, then it means they are exactly the same. Now, look at this. The power here is the power here. Definitely, if they are the same, the basis two should be the same. We have come to the end of part A. In part B, we shall solve some examples. But before then, let me give you very simple examples. Let's see if you can quickly remember some of the laws we have treated. One. Minus 6 raised to power 0. What is the answer? Beautiful. 1. Anything raised to power 0 is 1. If I write 1 raised to power root 9, what is the answer? That one is 1. I told you that 1 raised to power any number is the same thing. Now, number 3. If I have 2 over 5 raised to power 1, what does it mean? It simply means 2 over 5. Any number raised to power 1, I told you to be the same thing. Number 4. 3 raised to power 4. We know that is 81. Number 5. Bracket 2 raised to power 11 times 5 raised to power 2. Everything raised to power 3 is what? I told you the 3 will multiply each of the powers. So in this case, this will be 2 raised to power 33. And this will be 5 raised to the power 6. Number 6. 7 raised to the power minus 5. That will be 1 over 7 raised to the power 5. Number 7. 6 over 7 raised to the power minus 2. Do not forget, this means reciprocal. Turn this upside down. That will be 7 over 6. And this is no more because you have already performed the operation. This is 2. And this can be separated into 7 raised to the power 2, 6 raised to the power 2. And that gives you 49 over 36. You can write as mixed fraction if you want. Number 8. 2 raised to the power 3 over 7 raised to the power 2 into power 3 will give you what? Yeah, that will be 2 raised to the power 3 times 3, 9, over 7 raised to the power 2 times 3, 6. And that is it. Aha! Please take note. These powers cannot cut themselves. Number 9. 3 raised to the power 2 times 3 raised to the power root 5 equals what? These are the same. So it will be 3 is to the power 2. This is multiplication. It will be plus and root 5. Number 10. 7 raised to the power minus 3 over 7 raised to the power 2. Let's carefully solve this. 7, 7, that's the base. So I'll pick 7. Because of the division, I'm going to be using negative. In the power so i have minus three so this will become minus and this is two so i have seven and this is minus five and we have learned that this means reciprocal and this one means seven over one so the reciprocal will be what one over seven this to power five number eleven number eleven Cube root 
of 27, everything raised to the power 2. What will be the answer? Okay, this is 27, the way I did it. There is a 1 here, 1 times 2, we have 2 over the 3. The 3 is telling you there is a number, you can raise to the power 3 to get this, that is 3 raised to the power 3 times 2 over 3. These are odd numbers, so when I cut, there is no plus minus, so they will cut easily. And this is now 3 raised to the power 2, and the answer is 9. Number 12, what will the answer be? Okay. This is 81 raised to the power 1 over 4. This telling you there's a number you can raise to the power 4 to get this. And that happens to be 3 raised to the power 4. Then times 1 over 4. These are what? Even numbers. So when you cut, you put plus minus. 3 raised to the power 1 is 3. And that is 3. Number 13, 2 raised to the power x equals 2 raised to the power minus 4. These are the same. Do not cut. It simply implies that x is equal to minus 4. And the last question, number 14, x raised to the power minus 6 equals 4 raised to the power minus 6. The powers are the same. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the basis are supposed to be the same. X equals 4. See you in part B. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Click like if you enjoyed our video. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications of our subsequent videos.